Hello, and welcome back to the Late Night History Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest sharing her life story with us and the trials and hardships she overcame. Everyone, please welcome Mrs. Narcissa Whitman. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. It makes me glad that young people out there truly want to hear my story. Of course! So let's get straight into it. How did your story begin, Narcissa? What was your plan and who came alongside you? Our journey began in the year 1836 where my husband Marcus and I decided to start a Protestant mission. We began a 7-month, 3,000-mile journey from the state of New York to the Pacific Northwest. Our main mission was to Christianize the Indians in Oregon country. Our faith in Christ played a huge role in it all, and my dire entries to my family would continually convey how much we put our faith in the Lord to be with us during the mission. Wow, that's so inspiring! How you kept your faith even in the midst of adversity. Tell us about your family life. Did you have any children? Oh yes, we had a beautiful young daughter. She was born in the year 1837 and was loved by everyone. Her name was Alice Clarissa and was given the name Cayuse Girl because she was born on Cayuse land. However, our lives took a very drastic turn when one day in June 1839, when Alice Clarissa, at the age of two years old, fell into the river and drowned. This traumatic situation caused me to become very depressed, simultaneously breaking an important bond between the Cayuse tribe and us. Still, to this very day, I haven't fully recovered from it. Oh my goodness, that must have been terrible for both you and your husband. How was Marcus during all of this? During this time, the Indians admired certain practices of the white people and incorporated them into their routines, but didn't wish for them to replace their lifestyle. Marcus turned his focus from these benighted Indians and focused on retrieving more white settlers and eventually became an advocate for the American expansion in Oregon country. Over those years, many things happened. Each year, so many new immigrants and many mountain men came and joined the mission, even bringing along wagon trains, which helped us for what would soon be the Oregon Trail. So, what about the American board? What were all their thoughts concerning the situation? This is where much of our hardships really began. Around mid-1840, four mission stations were located in Oregon country, all sponsored by the American board. In 1842, the board ordered Wailat Poo and two other stations to close. This left my husband Marcus assigned to the only station left. Marcus, however, disagreed with their decisions and tried to do everything in his power to stop them. So he traveled all the way to Boston to speak his mind and protest the closure of the Wailat Poo mission station. My husband listed all the reasons and did everything in his power to convince them not to close down the station. Tribal leaders made every effort to try and get rid of us for good, and my husband was brutally beaten for refusing to follow the commands that were given to him, and he was forced to close down the Wailam Poo mission. I can't believe you had to go through all of that. I mean, how, how did most of the people start dying? When about 4,000 emigrants arrived in Oregon country, it brought along the epidemic of measles. Cayuses had no natural immunity to this infectious disease, and nearly half of the Indians all near our mission station died. A lot of Marcus's white patients could survive compared to the survival rate of the Indian patients that he had. This epidemic and Marcus not being able to help and save all of them is what started the attack on our mission. What about the Whitman Massacre? How did that happen? November 29, 1847, about 14 to 18 Cayuse men, fully armed with a variety of weapons, came barging into our mission complex. Hearing all of the noise and commotion, Marcus went into the kitchen and they demanded him to get them the medicine to be relieved of measles. One of the young girls was there to witness it. She saw Marcus opening up the cupboard and as he was getting the medicine, one of the Indians plunged an axe into the back of his head. That same evening, about majority of them also died. Narcissa, I am so sorry. That is such a tragedy to go through, seeing your own husband being attacked and killed. Tell us, what is the best advice you'd give the listeners today? All I can say is that you must cherish the moments you have with your loved ones for as much as you can. It can be easily taken away within the snap of a finger and always document your experiences. 
My way of doing that was through my diary entries that my mother suggested I write to her as we were on our journey. Each one of the diaries descriptively explained what we do each and every day and how we overcame many of the hardships we went through. Whether you go through anything similar in life, always cherish the present you live in. In the end, God always has a plan. You couldn't have said it better. God always has a plan. So there you have it, folks, a beautiful story of the life of Narcissa Whitman. And even if she went through many hardships alongside her husband, she was faithful until her very last breath. Thank you for being our guest tonight, Narcissa. And we can't wait to have you all next time on the Late Night History Podcast. Good night, guys.